Hi, I'm Despina Nicola from Dear to Begin Life Coaching. Today, I want to look at how to enhance your relationship. I want to give you four takeaways, um, which we're going to look at. But first of all, I just want to give you an analogy of a relationship. A relationship is like a glass jar and filling that glass jar up. You can fill it up uh, like with marbles and you can you should fill it up with commitment, with romance, with passion, with love, with fondness and admiration, with being influenced or influencing, with spending time together. All of these things, all of these experiences, that's what the jar should be filled with. And by doing this, you can enhance the relationship. Um, many of us think that we're individuals and we stand tall, we stand, which is good, okay. But the fact is we are pack animals. We do need each other to grow. And if you were to take a baby, a newborn baby and leave it by itself, it would die. I mean, even if you were to feed the baby and give it what it needs, if it's not touched emotionally and having the, the parent or the caregiver there, the baby would die. We need each other. We need commitment. We need connection, emotional connection to survive. And that's why I think many relationships break down. Many people um, are not willing to work at a relationship and they'll settle just for the passion, just for the lust, instead of building, like filling that, that jar, mm -hmm. filling that jar up. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the four ideas that you can work on, the four four techniques or components or whatever of building a relationship and this is just not hearsay I mean this is a 50-year study from Gottman Institute they followed people around for 50 years I'm not sure if it's still going and these are the four things they found so it's research-based number one a love map so when you know as much as you can about your partner, their likes, their loves, their dislikes, um, their basic philosophies, their hobbies, their best friends, their favorite color, their favorite foods, all of these things. Um, it's a way of giving it to them as much as you can, giving what they love to them. And so you build a love map with them. And make sure they find out about you too, what you like. And this way, you've got a solid foundation. So that's pillar number one. Pillar number two is fondness and admiration. Actually being excited to see them. Admiring the things that they do. Like if you come home and they've cleaned the house for you, but there's one, there's dirt maybe they didn't there's fluff maybe on the carpet on the little mat in front of the sofa now if you're going to scream and yell at them for that and not scan for the good well they're probably not going to do that again they're not going to clean for you again and so it's about scanning for the good instead of the bad and admiring them I mean saying thank you for that gosh you did a good job Scanning for the good, that's the basic thing. Um, the next one is, yeah, so that's fondness and admiration. Number three is turning towards each other. This could be like giving your full attention to them. So if they're, if they're talking about a football match that you're not really interested in, just listen to them ask them questions about it. Or if they if the, if they see a car, that nice car that goes by, they say, oh, look at that. 
turn around, look at it, see it. I mean, ask them about it. Why do you like it? You know, tell me about the engine. I don't know. Just try, try to, you know, try to get into the comp, turn towards them, not away. It's about building an emotional bank account with them. And all these experiences, they'll see that you see them, that you hear them, you understand them, you understand what page they're on. And that way you're building like, you're building a safe haven when storms come because they've learned to trust you. Because storms do come in relationships, but it's a matter of building that trust and the feeling of being seen and heard, that emotional bank account, before the storms come. The next one is letting each partner influence you. So it's not about one person leading the family or the relationship. It's about, it's about being in a partnership. A partnership has two people. So this one's maybe you want to go on holiday. Maybe you want to go on holiday to, it's your holidays and your partner of you have taken maybe 10 days off and you want to go and see your mother who's sick and they want to see, they want to go to the mountains. Um, maybe it's a good idea to influence each other, like say, actually use, use a technique which is three steps for this one. I would say using, first of all, I am or I feel. That's number one. I am or I feel. I am, what are you? Worried. I am scared. I am what? So state the emotion that you are. I am what? I feel what? Number one. Number two, state the fact. What is the fact? Why do you want to go and see your mother? I am scared because the reason why the fact um, mum has become quite sick and I'm scared that this will lead to um, her not being able, uh, I don't know, not being able to help herself and it would upset me if I'm not there. I'll never forgive myself if I, if I could help her and I wasn't there for her. And then state number three, what you need. What do you need? I need to go and see her for at least half of the holiday. And so I can make sure she's okay. Okay, so influence each other. State what you feel, what the reason, the fact why you feel that. And then what you need of the other partner. And, and that's the best way to look at it. A relationship is 50-50 is, is or any kind of relationship. It can be work, family, colleague, um, I don't know, whatever relationship, friends. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I'd love you guys to join our group. It's called Dare to Begin Life Coaching on Facebook. We are the most amazing people there. Thank you so much for watching. Love you lots. Bye.